Good morning. The point of this video is to share our experience of building our house and dealing with a contractor. We built a house in 2018 and it went from awesome to awful. It started out perfect and it ended up terrible. This video is not intended to bash anybody or really just talk bad about people. I'm hoping to give advice or encouragement if you're thinking about building a house, whether it be on land or in a neighborhood, hopefully you will listen to this story and listen to the advice and not make all the mistakes that I made. First, I want to give you two things to keep in mind about contractors and subcontractors. Now, I know that there is an exception to every rule, and I know not every contractor or subcontractor fits into this. There may be some that actually care about you and your project all the way through. But in general, number one, you may be building your dream house, but it is not the contractor's house. It's not the subcontractor's house. To them, it is just another day at work. They're just trying to put in their eight or 10 hours and go home. The second thing to keep in mind is your general contractor is only as good as his subs. You may find a general contractor that you really like and you really connect with, and then he uses subcontractors that are just not that good. Maybe because he's trying to save money Maybe he's just been using them for a long time, so he feels like he wants to give them the work. Whatever the reason, keep in mind, your general contractor is only as good as the people he uses to actually build the house. That's the problem we ran into. I really liked the general contractor that we used, but the subcontractors he used, they were not that great. Let's get into the story of building our house and I do want to say that I put 50% of the blame on myself, 50% on the contractor. While it would be easy to get mad at the contractor and blame everything on him, there are a lot of reasons why this is my fault also, and I will be talking about that as I go through the story. We built a house in 2018. When we decided to build a house, we needed a general contractor. How do you find a general contractor? We just started talking to everybody. We were talking to people at work, people at church, wherever we were, we were just talking about, hey, we're gonna buy some land, we're gonna look at house plans, we're gonna build a house. And people started telling us, hey, so-and-so builds houses, or I know this guy, he built a house for my daughter, my cousin, whoever. People started giving us the names of contractors. So we bought land and we had the house plan drawn up. Then it was time to find the contractor, so I started talking to a few different contractors. I had a long list of questions that I was asking the contractors. I do have a lot of experience when it comes to working on houses. So I had this long list of questions that I was going to ask the contractors. As I would talk to different contractors, they would give me the answers. And there were a couple different contractors that I liked. But one guy in particular, he came highly recommended by two different people. I don't think these two people knew that each one was recommending this same guy. I talked to him, I gave him our house plans, and from the beginning, it just seemed perfect. In a phone conversation, I started asking him the questions on my list, and it just seemed perfect. He was actually asking me questions and talking about things on the list that I had not even gotten to yet. He would bring up things that I was gonna ask him further down in the question list. He was already bringing them up. It just seemed like a perfect situation. Also, the contractor that I chose was a small time builder. I don't know his exact numbers, but I'm gonna guess he builds maybe 10 to 20 houses per year, if that many. He also had a couple of commercial restaurant projects going on, but I wanted, I thought I wanted a small time house builder because I thought that would mean he could spend more time on our project. Another thing is that he lives very close to where we were building our house. I thought that meant that he would be here all the time because he lives right down the road from us. 
I thought he would be here all the time checking on the property, making sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. That's the first lesson that I learned. Having a small time contractor does not necessarily mean that they're going to be at your project more. In some cases, it may be better to use a, a big time contractor, somebody that does lots of houses, because that contractor may actually have some type of project manager that can be assigned to you. And then that project manager will be running the construction of your house. And so that they're around a lot more where my contractor who was, he was stretched out pretty far. I, I think at the time when he first started building the house, it was not very busy. He had a few projects going on around us, but it seems like by the time we got done with our house, he was very busy and I think he had projects stretched out pretty far across the state. So he was not really spending any time at our property. So if you think that going with a small time builder will get you more attention and more focus on your property, on your construction project, I have found that that is not necessarily the case. In the beginning, I think that my builder was dropping by our house every day, every two or three days. I worked a lot, so he was sending me pictures when the basement was dug out, when the concrete was poured. He was texting me pictures. It was a very exciting time. But it seems like by the midpoint or towards the end of the project, it seems like he was really not coming by here as often. Now, this is the first house I've built from ground up, and maybe that's just the way it goes. Maybe he has to be more involved at the beginning and not towards the end, but we definitely started having problems with the subcontractors towards the end. Well, it has gotten pretty ugly out here. It has been raining for most of the day. We've had some pretty bad thunderstorms. The swimming pool looks like I'm gonna have to drain some water out of it. We're getting pretty full over there. It's almost above the skimmer. Hopefully the rain does not mess up the audio. And I've got my laptop out now, so we're gonna set this up. Let's try to get through the rest of this video. I may actually have to read the rest of this. Back in the day when I was a young man, I enjoyed the party life a little too much. And now, the old noodle is fried. I'm getting wet sitting right here. And I'm gonna have to drain this pool in a minute. Even though we hired a general contractor and the subcontractors did most of the work, I still did a lot of things myself. I did all of the interior doors and trim. I did all of the interior painting. I put in all of the flooring except for the tile in the bathrooms. And there's a long list of other things that I did in the house during the construction. We were living in a camper on the property while the house was being built. This was helpful because I was always working on the house when I got home from work. But I wonder if that is also the reason why we started having trouble with the contractor towards the middle and end of the project. Maybe he thought because I was always here that I would let him know if there was a problem. Maybe he kind of thought of me as the foreman or the project manager. If you're gonna build a house and it's gonna be a turnkey kind of deal, you know, that means basically you're not involved at all. You hire a general contractor to build a house. You pick the finishes, the paint colors, whatever. You don't do any of the construction yourself. It is a turnkey. That means at the end of the project, you just turn the key, walk in the door. If that's the type of construction deal you're looking for, then you may not have the problem that I had. But because I was so heavily involved in a lot of the construction and I was here every single day actually living on the property while the house was being built, I don't know if that added to the fact that the contractor slowly kind of stepped away from the construction. It seems like he was here less and less, maybe because I was here all the time. Towards the middle and end of the project, we started having problems with some of the subs. Really, the, uh, the quality of their work was just not up to my standard. And this is where I really failed. My advice to you, if you're building a house and you are unhappy with anything, you need to say something about it. You need to talk to your contractor. What are you unhappy about? 
What is not up to your satisfaction? I just was always trying to be that friendly, easygoing customer that didn't cause any problems for the contractor. And in the end, that caused problems for me. My wife was always pointing out things that she was not happy about and things that were not built well. My wife kept telling me during the project that she was going to call the contractor and complain about this or that. And I kept saying, no, no, don't worry, it'll be fine. I'll fix it, it'll be okay, blah, blah, whatever. That was stupid. Do not do that. If you or your spouse is unhappy about something, you need to talk to the contractor about it and they need to make it right. And honestly, the contractor probably would have if I would have said something. But a lot of times I did not complain. I just, I just kept putting it off and putting it off and figured I would deal with it later. I just wanted to get the project done. We were living in a camper on the property at the time and it was not a good experience for us. So I was really just wanting the house to be complete so we could move out of the camper and move into the house. We had several problems with subcontractors, several things we were unhappy about, especially from about the middle of the project towards the end. A couple things like the bathroom tile and the roof. I take responsibility. I'm only gonna talk about one story when it comes to the bathroom tile and how horrible that experience was, but there were several other things about the house that we're really not happy with. So we had a tile guy come in and we paid thousands of dollars. Two of our bathrooms, the floor tile and the shower tile, absolutely hideous. He did a terrible job. We complained about it to the general contractor several times and the tile guy kept coming back. He came back four or five times and he would be here for several hours. Now, I'm not the type of guy that's always going to be hanging around making sure he's working, so I don't know what he was doing, but it seems like he never fixed the problem. We had lots of grout missing. We had uneven floor tiles. This man is supposed to be a professional, and he worked with this general contractor on every house that he did. He did terrible work. Pathetic. It was the worst, ugliest tile job I've ever seen. It looked like... It was a homeowner DIY job, the first thing he's ever tried to do himself. This was not the work of a professional. And every time I would complain, the contractor would send him back. And our general contractor said, he will continue to send that tile guy back as many times as we need. He will make him come back until we are happy. But the problem is, I mean, after four or five times of this guy coming back, Clearly, either he doesn't have the skill to complete the job, or what I think was the case, he really just doesn't care. He did not care about doing a good job. I don't know why he picked our job to flake out on instead of some of the other projects, because the general contractor kept saying he never does this type of work, he always does a great job. Why was it on our house? He did a horrible job. We actually had more work that we were gonna give him, thousands of dollars worth of work. He was going to do the backsplash in the kitchen. He was going to do the brick, the brick for the fireplace in the living room. But after all these problems in the bathroom, I got to the point where I told this general contractor, I don't ever want that man inside my house. You know, another thing about this guy's sloppy work, he would be mixing the thin set that you stick the tile to the floor in the wall. And he would also be mixing the grout on our front porch. Our house is white. If you haven't seen my other videos, my house is white. And he would be mixing up this grout or the thin set on the front porch, and it's gray or light gray, splatter it all over my house that had already been painted white. And he just left it. He would leave trash and everything all over the house, all over the front porch. I certainly am to blame ultimately for this because I should not have given up. I should have told that contractor, yes, that guy is going to come back. If it takes 50 times of him coming back, he's going to come back until I am satisfied. But after a while, I just gave up and I wanted to just move on and get the house done. My advice to you is do not give up. Do not get frustrated. 
if you are paying, especially if you're paying thousands of dollars for something to be done in your house, you need to make sure it is done to your satisfaction. You need to talk to that contractor and make sure they do it right. I'm not going to get into the story, but we had a similar thing with the roof. We have a metal roof and it has been a disaster. We're coming up on two years of living in this house and our roof still leaks. There's several places where the roof leaks and the guy that the subcontractor that our general contractor had put the roof on, supposedly he had put metal roofs on before, but I don't think he put very many because I don't feel like he knew what he was doing. From the moment he put the roof on, it kept leaking and the guy, he would keep sending him back out and he would keep fixing this and adjusting that and replacing whatever well two years later the roof is still leaking in some spots and i'm just over it i'm frustrated at some point i'm just going to pay a professional roofing company to actually come out redo the roof so i don't have to worry about it because even though i really like the general contractor a lot of the subcontractors that he is using they're really hurting his reputation in my opinion. I think it was my mom that actually told me this story. It was a friend of hers that was building a house. It was a man and a woman, it was a couple. And one day the general contractor calls the husband and says, I need you to do something about your wife. Your wife is always harassing my subs and she's always calling me, she's always bugging me. And that man said the exact thing he should have said. If you were building the house right, and if your subs were doing a good job, my wife would not be bothering anybody. My wife wouldn't be calling you. And my wife wanted to call our general contractor all the time, and I just kept saying, no, no, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. That was stupid. I should have let her lead the project, apparently and we probably would not be as unhappy as we are right now. My advice to make sure that your construction project goes better than ours did, number one, make sure that you are satisfied with the work that the contractor and the subcontractors are doing. If you're not happy, don't let it just slide by like I did. You need to talk to the contractor about it. You need to complain about it. I mean, you shouldn't be mean about it, really, but you need to just stay on top of that contractor and make sure you're getting your money's worth. Another thing I would do probably at the beginning of the project is talk to the contractor and find out how does the project run? I'm talking about how often will the general contractor come by and actually check on your project? Or maybe if you're using a bigger contractor who does lots of houses, if he is going to assign maybe a foreman or a project manager to you and your project, how often should you expect them to come by the property and how often will they be getting in touch with you? It seemed like all the time I was having to call the contractor and complain about this wasn't right, the roof is leaking or the tile's not done right or the window is the wrong size, whatever it might be. I feel like the general contractor should have been on top of that. I should not have been bringing that up to him. He should have already been on top of it. But maybe he was too busy with other projects. Maybe in my case, he felt like I was already here and I was kind of running things. I don't know. I will be making some other videos about mistakes that we made while building this house. So be sure to subscribe. If you made it this far in my video, thank you for watching.